Shout out to my my, my son's my son's mother. Um, she she joined the team and helped me expand too. Seriously. Um, correct. You know. You are employing your son's mother. Correct. And yeah. it, and, and 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 respectfully engaged to another woman. Correct. Come on. My, that, that, that's the <laughs> No cap. So I want to ask you this question up front. <clears throat> when you were in school or when you're at the airport or when you are, let's say, you're out and about in the city, have you ever just walked up to a vending machine and got you some Skittles, got you something to drink? Or what about in the airport, you walk up to a vending machine, you actually purchase some makeup? I've been seeing this stuff all around the country and I'm like, man, is this a profitable business? Well, I was just minding my business, doing some research, trying to study about what are some creative topics I can add to the show. And man, and I saw this uh, show on CNBC, I always follow them because they're always talking about young millennials, young successful people who are winning and making 100,000, making a half a million, making 300,000. And there was this young guy locally here in the Baltimore area um, that was making close to about, I mean, I'm not gonna say how much he was making, but he was making, he is making, not was, he is making a killing in the vending machine business. You guys know I stand for how do we get out of debt and how do we build wealth and really start building a legacy legacy for our families. And when I saw this, I was like, man, this is different. I've never talked to anyone about a vending machine business. You can literally do this on the side that ends up coming a full-time, uh, that could end up um, becoming a full-time business for you. I was doing a research that only 20% of the U.S. consumers um, are actually using the vending machine. So when I even went deeper, that is nearly a hundred million American people each and every single day are using a vending machine. Then let's go deeper, you guys. This year alone, in the year of 2022, the vending machine business is a $10.2 billion industry. $10.2 billion. So the vending machines are making $10.2 billion. How would you like just to get 100,000 of that? How, maybe a million of that. Or you know what, let's say on the side, maybe an extra two, three thousand dollars a month. Well, on today's show, man, we're gonna talk to a guy. Um, he's gonna share with his story how he is making a killing doing it. Uh, but before we go there, I wanna remind you and thank one of our uh, today's sponsors is Ethos. Man, um, you all know me, as we are building wealth, as we are eliminating debt, and as we are starting to build a legacy, one of the key things to building a le legacy, especially as um, a minority individual, is make sure that we have the proper insurance in place. What is it to build all this wealth? What is it to really um, do all these things here on earth? But then when we get to heaven as a Christian man, we're at peace, we're at joy, we're in the best place of our life, right? But when we look down, we see our spouses, our kids are now struggling because we weren't thinking about them when we were living. Well, I partner with my good friends over at Ethos. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos uh, because they're gonna partner with me to help provide you affordable life insurance. Now, you can get up to $2 million policy policy without even going into the doctor with no blood work for as little as $50 to $100, depending on what season you are in life. It will literally take you 10 minutes to do this application. And within a matter of 10 minutes, you will have your policy approved and you will have life insurance put into place. OK, and what I love about Ethos is once you sign up with them, they're going to also include a free will for you. So now you have a life insurance policy and now you get a will so you can tell the government what you want done with your money, with your assets, with your children, with anything and everything that you have uh, right there for the cost of pennies. Think about it. Um, what is it to leave your family and you go off to heaven and you leave them with nothing? They say that the average black man will leave his kids and his families uh, with bills and with benefits. Um, and the benefits are only enough to take care of partial of the bills. But it's not enough to sit here and send your kids off to college to make sure that your wife doesn't have to worry about working for the next 10 years, that you know she can actually mourn your passing I mean, celebrate your, your passing on to heaven. Uh, but most African-Americans, most young black couples, uh, when they die, they're not leaving around health insurance, not health insurance, life insurance. And so I want to just uh, make sure that I deliver this message to you. Go check out Ethos, my favorite company. I have them as insurance policy. My producer has them as an insurance policy. You need to have them as well. What's $50? 
to me, respectfully saying this, some of you going to get upset. You go out there and you buy chains, you buy jewelry, you buy nice name brand stuff. You go out there and you buy a nice car. I mean, you, you Gucci'd up, you Louis Vuitton up, but you can't spend $50 a month to make sure that your family is taken care of and just in case if you pass. That's a selfish man, that's a selfish woman. That's a selfish person. Take care of your family. That's truly, truly being a man, truly being a woman, truly being a father or a mother, a husband or a wife by saying, hey, I love you enough to think about you after I pass. Go to anthonyneal.com uh, forward slash um, ethos. But let's get into some good news. <laughs> Yo, I got my boy uh, Marcus Graham in the building today. This is a young man, sharp young man, 31 years old. Um, uh, just recently got engaged to an amazing, beautiful, smart, intelligent woman. Um, and he is out here winning. Um, and so, man, welcome to the table, bro. Oh, man, thank you for having me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. But let's, let's, let's get into it, bro. I, I was watching your CNBC special. Mm -hmm. And, man, and just to see your journey, man, congrats up front. And when I started doing more research on you and more research on this vending machine business, I was like, man, this really is a lucrative business that people are really like, like sleeping on. Correct. Um, I, I want to start from the very beginning as a young black man, because um, you're young, 31 years old, you know, seven years younger than me. Um, when I started doing the research, OK, 20 percent of American people are using the vending machine. Right. Um, I, I'm curious when you started learning more about the vending machine business, what did you see missing in that business that you thought that you could provide to it, that you can bring to that industry that was different from everyone else that would help you stand out? Um, I think, I mean, to be honest, man, just really, really good um, customer service and personality. Mm. Being being the pretty much CEO of your company, you know, um, you kind of have a leg up than some of the other Vendors. Um, it's not often that people get to talk to the CEO of a company, and since you are the CEO of the company and you know the company and you, um, you know, can talk to them, you kind of have a leg up. Yeah. You know, you kind of have a really, you know, big leg up. Most people are sending out somebody from their team to talk to companies, but if your company, you know it, you want their services, like you have a leg up. Wow. Um, so I, I thought about that. It was very important for me to never be the vending machine guy who's stocking. I was Marcus. <laughs> and stuff like that goes a long way, you know. So whether I may bring my kids there sometimes. Mm. So the next time I come, where's the little ones? Like all of those things kind of make me stand out because I, I, I kind of build a relationship with each of my locations. Man, that's awesome. Uh, so taking your kids, how many kids do you have? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. Get what? Two girls, two boys. Three boys. Three boys. Yeah, we about to get Levar Ball going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How important is that to you as a father, exposing your kids to entrepreneurship, um, working, them seeing you work, especially as three young men? Um, why do you take the time to take your kids with you out uh, to to restock the vending machines? Uh. Because one day I, I used to work um, at a before and after school program. Um, this was, I still was working like 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember this little, it was a little boy, a little girl, um, and they were wearing Penn State shirts. And uh, you know, the little girl said that she was going to be a doctor at Penn State, and her younger brother said he was going to be a scientist at Penn State. Mm. And they said that their mother and father went to Penn State, um, their grandparents went to Penn State, their uncles, their aunts went to Penn State. And what I when I looked at that, all I can think about is just that, like, it's something that they just are, they already know. Yeah, like, yeah. that's something that's built in there. That's something that's passed down to them. That's wow. something that's important to them. So they only know that, you know, they're going to be successful and go to Penn State. Wow. So I, I thought about that in regards to my children. Like, if I teach them about entrepreneurship and ownership, that's what they're going to know. And it's going to be second nature to them. Like, they're never going to have to... Um, push themselves to do something or talk themselves into doing it's kind of just going to be a part of their life you know yeah. something that they kind of expect and just know to do yeah um so yeah that's pretty much it when, when i look at you man you're a black man right and it's like when, when we look at us um why do you think were you working full-time before getting into this or are you even working full-time right now and doing this on the side like what's your 
position right now? Is this full time for you? This full time for me. And has this always been full time for you? No, I got. I, it was full. Um, I was still working a full time job up until April thirtieth, two thousand twenty one. Uh, I got. I got. Uh, my contract was terminated from my job. Okay. What were you doing before this, career uh, wise? I was um, independent contractor, uh, behavioral um, consultant. Okay. 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 A lot of words, but. Yeah, I got you. So. <clears throat> Did you see this being full time for you eventually or were you just doing this on the side just to supplement some income being a father, you know, and stuff like that? Uh, I never I never saw it full time. Even when I was I mean, even I was doing really well with it. I just I never saw it as full time. I never even thought about um I never saw a past side hustle even when I started it. It was it was just supposed to just be a little side hustle that I did until I got into real estate. Got you. So this was a vehicle mm -hmm. to get you into real estate. Yeah. So like, um, I tell the story a lot. You know, um, I'm about 27, and I, I moved back in with my mom. You know, I wanted to save some money because I wanted to invest in real estate. So for nine months, I just racked up and go out, mm -hmm. and buy nothing and saved up 10k. Uh, I moved to Philly. I'm like, all right, I'm about to get into real estate with my homie. And uh, I'm like, damn, that 10K wasn't about to get me nowhere. <laughs> so I'm like, let me just get a car. He, he suggested getting a machine. So I got a couple machines, and it was just supposed to be part-time. You know, I, I didn't foresee this. Um, and, I mean, just to give a shout-out to my fiance, um, I wouldn't be where I'm at, you know, today if she didn't tell me, like, yo, you can – turn this into a million dollar uh, business because I, I wasn't thinking about it like that. So your fiance looked at you one day, your woman, mm -hmm. respectfully saying this, black woman, Yes. my God, she looked at you <laughs> and she said, you can do this and turn this into a, a seven figure business. Correct. It was, I, I will never forget it. It was last May and I had I just got fired from my job the, you know, the month prior and I'm just like, nah, I <laughs> But she was like, "Yeah, man, you can make this a you know million dollar industry." Um, and man, this shows you how you know how how dope she is. She she bought a book and and, and gave it to me. Uh, it was called Built to Sell. What? And was talking about raising the valuation of my company, different things and strategies that I can implement. You know, and um, yeah, I read most of the book, and I'm like, okay. And that's kind of been my focus, but I'm telling you, if she ain't say that and just kept encouraging me and pushing me, and it just felt like once I believed her, everything started to fall into place. Man, we gotta say right there, because not, 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 bro, bro, Marcus, welcome to the table, my guy. Because it's like, you, you, you talking good right here. I gotta ask this question, and if you don't wanna answer it, totally cool. At that time, was your fiance making more money than you in her career field? No. She wasn't. Okay, cool. So she looked at you and she said, hey, I believe in you. And her words gave you the motivation. She didn't talk down on you like, hey, what are you going to do since you lost a job? She was like, yo, that's cool. This right here, you sleeping on it. Not only believe in me, like, I'm going to help you. So... Yeah, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was an important conversation for me. Was she your fiance then? No. <laughs> but she your fiance now, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, fiance, I got to get you on the show. I told him um, um, that I got to get you on the show. I told him that before the show, man. Um, so, okay, cool, great. So, you lost your job. Mm hmm And how long were you in the vending machine business before you lost your job? Uh, like three and a half years. Okay, cool. So year one in the vending machine business, how much money did you make? Probably like three, four thousand dollars. Three or four thousand dollars. Yeah, my first two vending machines was only making like combined like sixty dollars a month. Okay, cool. So when I did some research, they said that the average person in the vending machine business makes about thirty four dollars a week in the vending machine business. But you're saying like, hey, the first year I did it, so okay, cool. So that's year one. You're staying true with the stats. Um, of what they're saying on the average. What'd you do year two? Um, year two, it was like five times that, so it was like 25,000. Um, uh, a but year, so what did that come out to a, a month? Uh, probably like yeah, 2,000. Yeah, yeah, so um, you did, And yeah. pretty much it was like, because I, I started my business, my first location was May 4th, 2018. So my business pretty much just picked up a year later, but you know, when you think of like the time, it, you know, it got there. Mm -hmm. Cause if I'm making sixty dollars a month, excuse me, then I got another location, and it, you know it grew a little bit, yeah, but nothing substantial. And then like the middle of next year, 
That's when it took off. So to get to twenty five thousand was kind of setting up for the following year. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. So we went from okay, I see you. So now you surpassed what they said. Correct. You know what I'm saying per day because now you're making about two thousand about plus let's say about twenty one hundred dollars to be exact it's about two thousand eighty something dollars. Year three, which came your pivotal transitional year, mm-hmm. what what did you make that year? Uh, like around two thousand two hundred. Two hundred thousand in vending machine. Yeah, my business grew through the pandemic. Um, I know it, it's crazy to, to talk about, but when now that I step back, um, it's not really crazy when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Because most of the most during the pandemic, everybody was kind of trying to step away from it because like everything's closing down. Um, but I ain't never been that kind of person, you know. So for me, I'm like, all right, eventually this is going to be over. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to try to get in front of as many locations as I could as possible so that way when it was over that they had me in their mind. Mm. Um, so what I did was I paid for mm. um, a SEO specialist to um, update the SEO on my website. I started to run Google ads. Because um, I just started thinking, like, man, it's, it's, it's 19,000 cities in America. Uh, so it's, it's, it's almost impossible for everything to be closed down and for everything to be taken. Um, and so I started to focus on that. And then I started to kind of shift my focus from where I was having vending machines. Because at that point in time, I had an amazing student housing location, which was earning, which was grossing like, you know, thirty two to thirty five hundred dollars a month. Um, you say student housing, college, college. OK, college. All, right, all right. So um, and I started to look and I started to see like, man, what could what could be open? You know, everybody's worried about what's shutting down. But I'm like, what could be open? And I started to notice things like warehouses were still open, you know, manufacturing, landscaping, nice. because, you know, people are still working on this kind of stuff. Yeah. And when you look at the fact that many um, of them may have been going to gas stations and things of that nature, and now the pandemic is kind of impacting that, and they want the guys to just kind of be on side, stay away from as much public, I'm like, mm, that might be the wave, you know? So I started reaching out to them. But then also, like I said, the SEO specialist um, increased my visibility. You know, mm. so I want to give a shout out to my man Reggie, um, uh, Cherry Lub- Lubin. He, yeah. he He's amazing with the SEO. He local? Um, kind of. He's, he's. I think he's in VA. Sure, I'm gonna hit you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was. He's really, really good with that. I mean, my my stuff kind of took off after. Um, after you paid him. After I paid him. So, so Marvin, when, when, when I, and I love this man. Uh, <coughs> like, bro, you. I, I just. I'm just honored to be across from another black man, who didn't. Who didn't run away. You. you one thing my father taught me was adapt, adjust, and overcome. Mm-hmm. So you would you okay? Pandemic hits, and you say, you know what? How do I adapt? How do I pivot? And how do I adjust and get ahead of where everyone else is thinking? Okay, cool. I'm gonna get out of the vending machine business. We're not. We don't have any traffic. You was like, yo, let's let's pivot. Yeah. And let's get ahead of it. Business may be slow right now, but it wasn't that slow. You went from twenty five thousand to two hundred thousand dollars. Correct. So that was year three into the game, which was what, 2020, right? Correct. 2021, what'd you do? Uh, like 300. God! Like 300. God, God! Yeah. So 2021, you went up 100,000. We're still in the midst of COVID. Correct. The world was halfway open, halfway closed. Yeah. You're still pivoting, still SEOing, you're still putting things into it. 2022, this year, where are you at? We're going to hit a half a mil. A half a million dollars. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to a couple. I, listen, I have one location. Like, it's it's amazing. Like, people can't believe that it's possible. Um, But, man, I, I maybe, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just lucky, but I, yeah. I don't think so. But <laughs> let's just say I am lucky. I got, I got an amazing location Um, that's a gaming, uh, 24-hour gaming. You know, they have about 400 people there Um, every day. And that location, they just earned 9800 last month. Um, but the beauty of that location is that they have four other locations that they gave us. And, you know, because of my team doing such a great job. So they gave us uh, one in, you know, in Detroit. Um, that one earned about 5600 last month. Um, Connecticut. Um, that one was about 4000 last month. And then we have two in New Jersey that we're actually going to be putting in towards the end of the month. So if you're talking about one that's going to do like 120000 you know, so just those combined is, is killing it. Plus, you know, some of the other you know, student housing, things of that nature. Like when you – and it's not like I – like I those locations <laughs> – sorry, those locations by themselves are running up a couple hundred – 
thousand. Plus, you know, I have twenty other machines. You know, so when how you, many machines total do you have? Like twenty three right now. So it's not hard to like, it's not, when you combine those, it's not hard to to get to that number. Um, it's just that I, I think that I hit a lick, um, but. I, I do credit my team, my mm -hmm. team for my, my sister, who was my main staff. Okay. Um, I moved her from home to come work with me. And and, and then, you know, once everything was set in Philly, um, where I, you know, was at, I was able to move to Maryland. You know, she, she takes care of everything in Philly, Delaware, and New Jersey. Um, um, shout out to my, my, my son's, my son's mother. Um, she, she joined the team and helped me expand too. Seriously. Um, correct. You know, you are employing your son's mother. Correct. And, yeah. and, 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 and respectfully engaged to another woman. Correct. Come on. Mark. That, that, that's the time. Let's go, Mark. Put him on the map, baby. Yo, bro. Like, how do you feel? Being a young black man, successful today, making a half a million dollars a year, and then what, like, realistically, what do you see yourself doing next year with this vending machine business? Um, definitely crossing seven seven figures. Um, um, my my one of my most important things I want to do is to pay my sister six figures. I'm wanting to join the six figure club. Mm -hmm. Um, looking to expand to more states. Cause like I said, when Pennsylvania, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Michigan, um, Maryland. Actually, I just sold a uh, location. Um, my last location in Maryland, uh, selling for $9,000. Um, so, but, you know, we'll kind of keep on growing into different states because now we kind of have that structure um, set up. Mm. Um, you know, people are like, man, it's, you know, <laughs> have some vendors that kind of hating on me right now when they see my story come out. There's no way he only works such and such hours a week. But it's true when you have a team like I have a team. So how many hours do you work a week? What do you mean? Um, really, I, I want to say about four hours a week with the vending machine business. Like, there's other stuff I do, you know, online or other things. But, like, when it comes to my vending machine business, um, I had one location in PG County that I stocked. It took about it take about two hours and you know a day, but I only stocked it once a week. I throw in the extra two hours because you just you know never know whatever miscellaneous stuff can happen. Yeah. But when I have a team in Philadelphia, I have a team in Connecticut, a team in Detroit. Um, it's not much for me to do. I have an assistant who takes care of some of the back end stuff. It's not hard to see why I'm only with this business. I'm not really hands on now. Two years ago. Man, my life was this. That's everything, every day. Every day. Um, but well, you put systems and in processes place. in place to where you can only work about four hours a week. Correct. So if anything was to happen to me, my business is going to continue to function at a, a great, you know, um, great. And I, I listen. I'm probably gonna credit her a lot throughout this 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 um, interview. But my fiance, you know, what I'm saying she talked about that. Like, if anything happened to you, you want these things to be in place so your your, your business is able to you know stay right. afloat and do well. You know, yeah. so that's you know teaching my sister how to take care of interviews and manage things. You know, wow. to go on them and, and lock down locations. You know, teaching you know my staff how to fix this or to work with that and order this kind of product and evaluate. You know, so that way, you know, I go on vacation every month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and my fiance, we go on vacation every single month. Every single month. Two, so Thursday, we're going to be heading to uh, San Fran, watch a basketball game. You know what I'm saying? Last shoot, two weeks ago, we was in West Virginia on a hiking trip. Before that, shit, we were Orlando, where we was at. We go every month. Every Miami, month. every month. You know what I'm saying? Up and you ever do anything out of the country? Uh, my birthday is New Year's Eve, so we're going to be in Cancun. Come on, man. <laughs> A man said, my birthday's New Year's Eve, me and the baby girl going to Cancun. Right, man. Come so, on. Yeah, so I'm able to do that, man. Dude, I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and I want to talk about, because I'm hearing a lot about family. Like, yeah. you just literally shifted my whole train. But we're going to say this after, because I want to give some people some practical stuff, the vendings wise. But yeah. we're going to come back to this family side of things, because I hear, I hear you're like me. You're really into family. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I want to talk about that. But someone watching right now, what is the best way to get into the vending machine business? Like, where do you start? Like, what's the very first thing 
that they need to look into to start getting into the vending machine as a side hustle? Uh, first things first is to not buy a vending machine. <laughs> For real? Yeah, that's the first mistake that people make is that they buy a vending machine and then try to find a place to put it. And then they contact me like, I got a machine, I don't know where to put it. And that's the first thing you don't do. Um, okay. What you want to do is maybe you want to scout the kind of place you don't want to go to because you really want you only want to buy a machine once you have an agreement with a place to put it. Uh, okay. You want your machine to be location specific. Okay. So if, say, for instance, you know, you buy a, uh, a a beverage machine and then you're shopping around. You find a place that wants services, but they want a snack machine or they may want a combo machine mm -hmm. or it may be a luxury, you know, apartment and you have them a machine that will fit into a car shop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's those kind of things are important, you know, so you don't want to buy a machine. You know, I'll be seeing some people in the vending machine business who who sell content or do this kind of stuff, and they be like, step one, buy a machine. No, they, they send you up. No, they you send know. you up to fail. Yeah, you don't want to buy because also you might have a machine and it doesn't fit through the door or it doesn't fit in the space. Like, uh, you want to wait until you get that meeting, you scope it out, you know how many people are going to be there because what if I have a big machine and it's 30 people there? Or if I have a small machine, there's 300 people there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you don't do that. That's the first thing you want to do. Um, you want to find out where you want to get your machines from. That's important because once you have an agreement with the place, you want to be able to give them a, you know, a, a timeline of when you're going to deliver the machine. Okay. You know? So if I know that if I go to this place over here, it's going to take three weeks. This place is going to be one week. This place is going to be six weeks. I've already known you know, what they may have in inventory. I've already known you know, the process, how long it'll take for it to be delivered. Yeah. So I can you know, relay that to the location. Um, you also want to kind of just... Think about what areas you want to service and also, you know, what kind of businesses you want to target. Like we all get in the location is great. You know what I'm saying? So if you can get a good location, no matter what the uh, industry is, you want to do it. But some people have certain niches. You know, I have a mentee who she primarily focuses on um, student housing. And I want to give a shout out to Maya Ray because uh, you, know, you can read about it in the business insider. Um, but also she just locked down. Hope she, Hope I can tell her. She just locked down like a government contract, you know, um, two buildings, 10 machines. You know, that's major wow. for her. And I, and I love to shout her out because she graduated college in May of 2020. So How did she? Uh, 24. And so, she's got 10 vending machines with the government? Man, she made 100000 last year, you know, so. At 24? 23 last year. 23 <laughs> running vending machines? Yeah, man. She, and she's doing that full-time or part-time? Full-time. Full-time. And she was able to branch off and uh, start a home inspecting business. Um, so, you know, shout out to her. Shout out to her. But, um, yeah, certain people have, you know, you know, you know, niches like they want to be in certain places. Yeah. Um, so figure out what kind of industry you want to be in. You want to be in hotels. You want to, you know, motels. You want um, landscaping, manufacturers, different kind of warehouses. You want business offices. You know, you want, you know, things of that nature. You want to figure out what kind of places you want to go to. Um, and you know, those those are pretty like the important stuff to to kind of get in there. You know? mm. Um, figure out what kind of car you know car reader you want to put on the machines um, because car readers are essential. You know, this, it's not optional at this point in time. It's not. Yeah. Um, if you see a vending machine in a business that looks like it's a good spot, doesn't have a car reader, um, I suggest you go in there and say, "Hey, listen, we got we got better business for you. Mm. We got better business for you." And uh, I would I would try to solicit that. You know. So. Like, I'm about to open up a studio location, right? Yeah. So I hit up you and Marcus. I need a vending machine in here. Um, do I get a portion of your proceeds in my in my place of establishment? For me, typically, no. Okay. Um, because we are service providers. That's one of the biggest misconceptions about the business. Okay. Is I see people saying, what about the rent? What about the, you, you know, the utilities? What about the commission? And, you know, eight to nine times out of ten, you won't be paying any of those things. Oh. Because if you think about it, right, um, you really assume the risk with everything. Mm -hmm. um, I buy the machine, mm -hmm. um, I, which leaves me open to vandalism, which doesn't happen, which which rarely happens. But right. also, you know, let's say it could happen, right. um, or it doesn't get used like that. I'm on the hook for this amount, you know, for this machine. Yeah, um, I have to buy the product. You know, if the product goes bad, I have that's on me. You know, yeah. buy the car, I have to pay for delivery. So you know, I'm providing you a service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so. Typically, you won't have to pay any commission or any rent or any utilities, things of that nature. There are cases where you, you know, you make, you know, so like I'm not going to say that's not going to happen, but most times you won't. Um, you may pay a flat rate. If I was 
and if I had to pay commission for like my locations, um, I would try to do it on a tiered basis, which is pretty much um, it, it allows me, it, it protects me, you know. So the more money I make, the more money you make, you mm-hmm. know. So for me, it's like if I make X amount of dollars, you know, I pay this amount of percentage if okay. I make, you know. So for me, my threshold is $500 okay. a month, you know. Um, that's what I encourage people. For me, at this point in time, 500 really wouldn't be anything because I employ people now. So I want specific type of locations. You yep, know? Yep. So my locations need to be like to earn 2500 a month plus because I'm going to have people. Employees. S- employees, you know. Yeah. So um, if anything, you know, um, you know, but yeah, so pretty much like, you know, you may, you know, it depends on the type of business, you know. So if you have a business that has like 100 plus people in there, that may be a place where I would be interested in paying commission, like if I had to, because the volume is there. You know, okay. it also depends on how many days a week, you know, you're going to be open or the hours of operation. Like those kind of things factor into what I believe can be like very high, high grossing yep. to where I can pay you commission, you know, because. Um, it's really just a luxury, you know, and that's that's why uh, you don't really have to pay, com- you know, any commission typically because they just want it to be a luxury. They want to make sure they don't pay anything. That's why Absolutely. if you go on my website, you know, you will see on there, say, request a free machine because some of these, you know, companies pay vendors. But we're like, no, we'll bring everything, set it up. We collect the money and you guys just use it. Yeah. Um. So it's kind of a, you know. Even trade, in my opinion. You know, I, and, and it's just, it's just funny. I'm thinking about it. like I remember I was at the barber shop and I um, put money in the vending machine, and then give me my stuff. And I said, like, "Hey, bro, I need my money back." He was like, "Call that number right there." Mm-hmm. And he was like, "I was like, well, wait, it's in your shop, and I got to call them. I'm gonna get my money back right now." <laughs> and um, he was like, "Hey, man, it's not my machine. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's 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 theirs, and you got to call them." And when that does happen, how does that process happen? Like, how do you get that person back their money? How do you even confirm that they even put money in it? Um, well, typically, most people aren't trying to, you know, trip over a dollar yeah. or two dollars. And if they and if they are, then actually, I'm like, uh, it don't matter because they actually need it then. Yeah, you know, no one <laughs> right. who has it will be tripping over a dollar, two dollars. Right. You know, I, right. I have somebody try to do a refund for fifty cent. We accidentally price it at fifty cent as opposed to one fifty, and they still wanted a refund for fifty cent. So. <laughs> but um, what I used to do was, and I still kind of do it, but leave petty cash. So ten to fifteen one at the location. Okay. So that way, if someone loses a dollar or things of that nature. Um, you know, they can go right to the point of contact, you know, office and get reimbursed. Um, okay. That helps a whole lot That's when smart. it comes to um, frustration. So um, when you do things like when you solving a problem like that, mm-hmm. they're less likely to complain. Yep. You know, where they, they're not going to go to the head person and say, man, this machine keep eating my dollar, blah, blah, right. blah. And, and, and that's going to make the point of contact. Like, all right, we need to do something about this. But if they say, hey, uh, I lost a dollar. And then, oh, no problem. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Um, but even with that, you're still pointing the point of contact in the middle of something. And for them, that could be frustrating to them. Yep. So what we do now is we put QR codes in our machine so we eliminate the point of contact. And we just have a, com- we have a direct communication with the consumer. Mm-hmm. So that way they scan the QR code. They fill out, you know, the, the location that they're at, you know, the the, the the option. So that way we can see if it's a, a specific option that keeps on having a problem. And we, you know, we whether they last four digits of the card they use, if they use a card, or if, you know, they have Cash App, you know, Venmo, PayPal, if they use cash, and we can just send it to them right away. So even now, they're not even going to even get an opportunity to complain to this person if they're getting refunded like that. Um, so... That's kind of how we 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 work right now, um. dude. Like when I when I when I listen to you, I I don't hear a brother saying, "Yo, let me get the bag." What I hear a brother saying is, "Let me let me set up the process and the systems correctly, yeah. so I can get the bag and create a healthy experience for my customers as well. Not just the customers who are buying from me, but the customers who I'm also placing the vending machine in." So it was like this way you have a healthy relationship with the people um, where your vending machine is sitting in. And then also you're creating a healthy environment uh, for the, your customers who actually purchase from you. And, and, and I like that because it kind of reminds me like of the, of the Chick-fil-A method, but it's a Chick-fil-A with vending machines. And I mean, that's just that's just solid. Um, and, and I love that. Do you offer courses 
um, online courses or or one on one coaching on how to get into the vending machine business? Um, I do have a course. Mm-hmm. I do have a course that I offer, which you know people can find that you know um, www.marcusgram.digital. Okay. Um, and in regards to online coaching, that's something that I'm looking to launch in the new year. Um, okay. It's been something that's been requested over the past couple of years. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've been nervous about doing it, you know, because uh, it's very important for me. Like you said, the, the experience is very important for me to provide, like, tangible things. You know, mm. um, I, I don't want to just chase it back. Um, you know, I've always lived with, you know, my name is my name. It's the only thing I'm going to live with and die with. And I never want you no know, no 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 money or nothing like that to muddy my name. So yeah. uh, I wanted to take time to kind of create something that I feel would be tangible for, you know, the people that would be in a program. Yeah. Um, so once that's out, I'll you know put it out. But man, I love it, y'all. We're gonna drop his website in today's show notes. Check him out, man. He's been all over the news with his success as uh, a young millennial, and so we're gonna drop his social media on there, and you're gonna uh, we'll drop his website so you can check it out and check out his course. Uh, but but bro, one of the things that I've noticed from you, which I just gotta commend you, is is you you give credit to your fiance right now, um, who you just said, hey, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with you. Um, you have three kids, two of them are yours, and one of them are hers. And and I commend you when you said like I have three. Um, two of them came from me in my past situation. One came from her past situation. But you're like, but I have three kids. Yeah. And then I hear you say like, hey, I employ my son's mother. And I'm like, whoa, you like you you still have a healthy relationship to where y'all two can still work together. You know what I'm saying? And so what I hear from you is that you are a young 31 year old black man who's about family. Yeah. And I, I, I just. And then when I and I'm always listening. Right. I, I've I've learned as I'm interviewing people to listen to what they're saying, listen to what they're not saying. You work four hours a week, but you and your fiance go on a vacation every single month. Correct. That's a family man. And you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you take your kids with you to refill some of your vending machines. That's a father. Why is family so important to you? Um, man, because I come from poverty, you know, and mm. when um, I have stuff now, but I didn't have it before, but I've yeah. always had family. Mm. Um, that's that's the truth, you know. Like, even with my success, um, I've never— felt like I I had like I do this for my family because I want to but it's not because I feel like I have to um, my family never made me feel like I have to take care of them they've they've been always like hey man get far away from here you know work on you know do this for yourself like they've always been big on that mm. which in turn makes me want to do things for them because I don't feel the pressure of having to uplift my family I'm doing it because I love them. They've always been supportive of me. They've always um, told me I was going to be somebody, you know. They didn't know exactly what. But since I was a kid, they always said, you were going to be special. You're going to be something. You're going to be successful. And they've always, you know, kind of protected me, you know. Yeah. You know how, like, you know, back in the day, you know, somebody be the the, the the guy that can play basketball real well, you know, the drug dealers, and they won't be like, hey, listen, get out of here. You know, you're going to be the one to make it out. Yeah. That's always how my family has been for me. Wow. Um, you know, my, my mom, my pops. Uh, my pops is not my biological father, um, but it's the only father I've known. You yeah, know? yeah. So even when they split, they have be, they have been friends. You know, they were together for about 20 years, and they wow. split. And to this day, you know, they're, they're still friends. So having a healthy relationship with my son's mother is not, you know, abnormal. That's normal for me, you know, because we all have one common, you know, oh, and that's to love our children. To, yeah, yeah. To put them in the best position, you know. And I don't, I'm a person that really believes that, you know, I'm not able to really be the father that I want to be if I don't care about my, my son's mother, you know. Um, I mean, just, you got to think about it, you know. That's it's, real. They got to think about it. You know, I have friends, right, and they have, you know, fiancés, and they have, you know, wives, and they have girlfriends. I respect them. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I res- because yeah. that's my homie. Oh, this your girl? Oh, that's my sis. So I, how can I not adopt that <laughs> to my, my sons who I love, and that's your mom. Like, you love her that much, so I love her. You know what I'm saying? So how does that dynamic work with your current fiance? Was that a hard discussion up front when, you, when y'all first connected, or was she like supportive of it? Uh, there's always boundaries. That's that's important. Boundaries, that's good. You know, boundaries is very very important. Um, but my fiance is uh, a very um, 
amazing person, an empathetic person, a compassionate person. Um, you know, communication is very big with her. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she loves my sons. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that, again, is like, I, you know, want to be have a great relationship with her. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, when you're taking care of stuff and you are being respectful when you're doing things, like I don't have any negativity because – um, I respect my son's mother to do it, to, to engage in anything that's going to create a problem because I love my sons that much. You know what I'm saying? I can't love them and, and disrespect or have a, a problem with someone that they love so much that just, that they don't go well together. Man, this generation is changing, man. I was um, talking to a young lady, man, and she was telling me that her, her son's father um, helps her with her business. And he has a whole nother, you know, situation at home. I was like, wow, I'm seeing this more and more that it's like like black men are starting to step up to the plate. Like, hey, even though we're not together, I still want to help you win. Because as my son or as my child's mother, it only helps me to help you win. Correct. Because if you're not winning, I, that impacts my child. And that impacts me. And that impacts me. So let me help you win <laughs> so it can impact our children and there's no drama there. And, and I love that mindset. And I wish more black men or more men in general could be like, yo, let's let's help each other win. But I love the boundaries that that you and your fiance clearly have to set to protect y'all's relationship. Correct. But it's like she can't really be tripping. Y'all going on vacation every month. <laughs> yeah, we spend a lot. Of, me and her, we spend a lot of time together. You know, um, yeah. which is which is important. But like, yeah, the boundaries, like that's important. Like having boundaries, you know. Um, and and when you have that, it it, you know, it it allows it allows trust. It yep. allows a lot of stuff. It allows a lot of things to just kind of fall into place. You know. Man. Um, what does your fiance do? I'm curious for a living. Uh, What's she, her career field? Uh, she's in tech. She's in tech. Yeah. A black woman in tech. Yeah, she's in tech. How long has she been in tech? Um, well, well before I know her, years, probably like yeah. 2016, 2017 kind of thing. Wow. And, and has, has what she, her career field in tech, has that impacted you and helped you in a certain kind of way to help your business expand? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, man, she's very big on structure and organization. Mm. You know, like I've been doing this vending machine thing. So I know things like the back of my hand, but she's like, you know, if you want to, you know, step away from having to do certain things. Like you have to make it so that someone else can easily be you and do these things. So as you know, as of right now, today, <laughs> she, you know, we were working together on some things. You know, so she's helping. Like even when it comes to some of the digital things that I sell, and um, I do a free webinar every Wednesday. Like she, she built a lot of this stuff, almost all of it. Let me stop saying a lot. She built. All of this stuff for Come me, on, man. Um, you know. So she's a brilliant mind. Um, yeah, she's she's yeah, she's she's great. Man, listen. Two things. Number one, I want to say there's nothing like a strong woman beside a strong man. You know, it's like Eve was made to be the helpmate of Adam. The woman was was made to be a helpmate to men. And I think oftentimes men are intimidated or sometimes men are intimidated by a successful strong woman like your woman. And I'm like, but that's crazy because it's like everything that she has on the inside of her is for you if you treat her right and love her right. Correct. And because of that, look at where <laughs> you are today. You 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 lost your job. She looked at you and said, listen, one, I got your back. Two, you can do it. And we're going to do this thing together. And you ain't going to slack with me. And today you're making a half a million, about to make a million dollars next year. Yeah. And I'm like, to me, that's the kind of woman that every man needs. And I believe that there are a lot of ladies out there like that, especially within the black community. I love all communities, y'all know that, but I, I just, when I, I get excited about black love and black partnership and black wealth building and black legacy, uh, because I mean, yo, it, it's powerful. And see, like y'all, like see, they put the camera back on him. See over here smiling. That man over here smiling. Yo, I got me one, boy. Now the funniest part about it is I always laugh that um, 
Man, she ini- she initially like like dumped me. She wasn't. She right? wasn't for you, bro. Because she, like, but I, I respected it because, listen, she told me I wasn't courting her enough, and she was a hundred percent. Cause I never had to do that. You know, you know, I, I I never had to do that. I was with my son's mother for a while. We was in college. So, yeah, yeah. You know, prior to that, I mean, I had no money. We weren't doing stuff. But yeah, yeah. But she, she, like, she knew what she wanted. She knew what she deserved. And she was like, hey, this is what I want. And, you know, so, you know, we're going to be cool, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, I ended up doing, I started sending her flowers and things of that nature, with, you know. Um, so, yeah, so. Would, you, would you say, would you class yourself, would you classify yourself as, and that's real quick, before I answer that question, listen, his woman is in tech. And, and, and I got to bring this up because y'all know me and, and I got I wasn't going to go there, but I'm going to go there today. Um, his woman is in tech. And I do believe that tech has become like the new black career. Uh, it's only about two percent of African-Americans are in the tech field. And I told myself and my team I was like, yo, we're going to push the tech industry and the content creation industry as a stream of income to help you get out of debt, to help you start building wealth, to help you start going after your dreams, to help you start building legacies. Because when I did the research, the two rising careers that are producing multi-millionaires are tech industry, is the tech industry and the content creation space. And so I partnered with um, an amazing organization called Bethel Tech. And Bethel Tech um, is just powerful nine month program. It's gonna cost you about 14 to about 15, 16, dollars to get into the program. They're gonna give you a $1,500 scholarship, right? Uh, just for being a part of my tribe. But then within the next month, nine months, you're gonna learn everything you need to learn, how to be, how to do coding, how to do websites, how to get into anything and all things tech. And within a matter of nine months, you could be making six figures plus. I met a young guy who makes $700,000 a year in the tech industry. What? And so listen, I'm going to go check them out. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel Tech. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel Tech. Is it Bethel Tech or Bethel? Bethel. Okay, cool. anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel. We'll make sure to put them in the uh, show notes today. But as you can see, you know, Marcus' girlfriend, uh, well, fiance, I'm sorry, uh, my sister, um, is in the tech industry. And clearly, I mean, look at them. But then the next, when they get married, man, they're making, they're going to be making over a million dollars in combined income. That's crazy income. And you can be there too. If you're not happy with your career, maybe you want something different. Maybe you want more income. Maybe you even want more freedom to where you can work from home. Listen. The tech industry is where you want to go. Go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel, and I promise you, you'll enjoy it. You know, bro, when, 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 I, when I look at you, <coughs> I, I see that you're not only a family man, but I'm like, man, listen, you you really have, it seems like you've balanced. Like you're working four hours a week. You're taking your wife out. I mean, your, your future wife out, you know, at least once a month, y'all go somewhere. How are you balancing, you know, running the business and being a family man. Therapy. Therapy. Mm-hmm. Therapy. Yeah, I go to therapy. Um, I go to therapy once a week. Um, so does my fiance, and then we also do couples therapy once a week. What? Um, so you're in therapy two times a week. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. There was a moment where I wasn't in therapy and I wasn't doing good mentally this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always try to be transparent about those things. Yeah. Uh, because. Even though, you know, I have the venom biz and all that, I'm, I'm just, I'm a person. Yeah. You know, so, um, but, you know, being back in therapy and not just being in therapy, but having a, a, a great therapist yeah. ha- has been very helpful for me and a lot of, you know, facets and stuff like that. What is one thing that you, over this year that you, because I'm huge on therapy. Like, I'm, I promote therapy yeah. on this channel. Um, a lot, at least at least once or twice a month. What is one thing that you've walked away that from therapy that's helped you become a better fiance, a better father, and a better man? Um, forgiveness. Forgiveness mm-hmm. from past hurt. From yeah, just or just past hurt. This even current stuff. It's just that like somebody would do something to me or say that that I, that I wouldn't do or say to you, so uh-huh. I hold on to it. I would, it would bother me, like you know. Yeah. But um, I've I've learned. To, to forgive. Yeah. Um, and would you say forgiveness is more for them or more for you? For myself. Mm. For myself. Forgiveness has been more for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I hold along. I just, I hold on to the past a lot. You know, I've been, yeah. you know, uh, but that's definitely something that I learned. Um, 
And I appreciate it because my man be giving, should be giving me homework. The, my therapist, like, yeah, yeah. listen, read this, go through this. So that is that is definitely been something. And 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 also just being able to like, you know, work on just acknowledging, you know, the positive and things, you know, because sometimes like. We may think about what someone doesn't do, and we don't ever really focus on what they do. Ooh. And I think that um, we forget we forget that even adults need positive reinsurance. You know, we do it for children, but adults need positive reinsurance. You know, sometimes something as simple as thank you for, you know, freaking taking the trash out. Wow. You know, because that, you know, now, oh, shit, you know what? I'm going to take the trash out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, things like that, you know, just learning to, you know, to, to engage in more positive reassurance um, about things. This dude said forgiveness and focusing on the things that they do do. Mm-hmm. I was on uh, live earlier this morning, and I was like, man— Y'all, we got to stop pointing a finger at the other person saying, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, you're not doing this, and start saying, you know what, one, what are you doing, like, as far as in yourself, and start celebrating the other person. Yeah. And one thing I've learned from therapy, too, as well, is one was, I wouldn't say forgiveness, because I, I never really, I was never really big on holding grudges, but I wouldn't forget you know what I'm saying? Like, if you did me wrong, I, I ain't going to hate you, but I won't give you the opportunity to get close to me again. But that's also a part of the forgiveness, though. Yeah. See, I I thought the same thing. I thought the same thing, that it was like, I forgive, but I don't forget. But mm-hmm. some of that is a level of not forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's when she taught me. That she, she was like, yo, so that is a level of grudges. Yeah. You know? And she was like, you— you know you're healed when when you even get around them and the name comes up and it doesn't bother you anymore. And I'd be like, you're right. And then I had to really realize, like, man, some of that stuff was holding me back from even being a better person of me and trusting someone else. Correct. You know, because I used to go in relationships um, and just be like, man, I'm tired of being a good man. I'm tired of, of all right, let me do this. All right, let me do that. And my my therapist was like, no, you continue being a good man. You just have to, one, forgive the ladies who've hurt you in the past, used you in the past, did you wrong in the past, because, Anthony, you've done people wrong in the past. Yep. That's how, <laughs> yeah, that's what I, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so so she was like, so you can't get upset with people who did you wrong when you've done ladies wrong in the past. I'm a villain in someone's story, and I've always accepted that. Like, I'm, we're all some a villain to someone. <laughs> always, all of us. And she's like, so when you accept that, you got to forgive yourself, not just for, you got to forgive in two areas. Forgive the people who hurt you and then forgive yourself for hurting someone else. Mm, that's because you, me, at this season of my life, I'm like, dang, I did do her wrong. And then I get scared. Then I go into relationships and I'm not being, being my true self now because it's like, wait, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to do that. So when you can really forgive, it frees yourself. That's real. To just be authentic all the way around because I'm fearful I'll hurt her the way I hurt that person in the past. And I'm like, mm-hmm. dang, I ain't forgive myself yet. And so then now this person can't truly experience me because I'm walking in fear. Damn, yo, that's hard because like when I say that's hard, I mean that's 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 some dope shit to say yeah. because you that pretty much happened to me even in my relationship I'm in right now, you know? Like I I didn't forgive myself. And when you say it out loud, that's exactly what it was. So my fear from not hurting her, I may have not even been my best self. And Absolutely. That, and it's not even my best self. I might have not been my true self. Yes. You know? And but that's not allowing her to stand. That's some real shit. Because I experienced that. Like, yeah. we've talked about those things in therapy or those things, you know, but it's like hearing it verbalized that way is exactly no. what it was and, and those are the things that I had to work through. No, that's real, bro. That's why I go to therapy. I mean, I, you know, I have no shame in my game saying um, go to therapy because I think, you know, when we experience this kind of success, right? I don't know about you because you actually had your woman when you started making this kind of money, but I, I have not had a true relationship since I've really been experiencing this success. And so I'm like, ugh. So like level of success brings a level of of demons and devils and thoughts inside of your head. And I'm like, dang, wait, I got to. And so literally my therapist walks me through. I go to a therapist once a week as well. 
uh, because I just want to make sure that when I do get into my next relationship, I am not the healthiest because I don't think you ever, you're always going to be getting healthier, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like I want to make sure that I am the healthiest I can be today mentally. Correct. Because I want to be the best husband. I want to be the best father. I want to be the best friend. I want to be the best leader with my team, you know, um, and I want to create a space and a place where we all can be honest. And I'm not, I'm quickly looking at myself, you know, because I want to make sure that I'm healthy. So you guys, man, I mean, if y'all want to look into therapy, um, um, I don't know if CJ can put it on the screen, but um, I want you to go check out um, anthonyoneal.com forward slash better help. Uh, we've partnered with them for the year 2022. Uh, because I told him, I was like, hey, I want to be able to provide African-Americans affordable um, um, opportunities to go see a therapist. And so that's who I use. Um, and so I would encourage you to go check them out. They're going to give you 10 percent off this month. We wasn't even going to go there. I didn't even know his brother was going to say that. You know listen, I go. Listen, I've had different therapists to different networks. And the therapist I have right now is through BetterHelp. And she has. Are you serious? been the best therapist I've ever had. For real? I promise you. Like, and I thought that maybe, like, because I had you bad experiences. I, I had a few, like, not good experiences on BetterHelp. Okay. So I'm thinking, like, damn, that's probably what it, But this therapist has been, like, the best. immaculate. And here's the thing, too. With, with therapy, I've had a few. I've had a few therapists. Yeah, yeah, and they didn't work. Yeah. But it's like, you, you got to keep going until you find that one. And there's nothing wrong with, 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 with that. Because it's like, hey, I've had several banks. Some of them didn't work. Then I found that one and it just worked, you know? And so you got to really identify. And from here's what I found what worked for me when it came to therapy as a man is I don't want a therapist that makes me feel like I'm right all the time. Correct. I want a therapist that's challenging me, not saying that I'm wrong all the time, but challenging my thought process. Yeah, this is, is it like, have you ever thought about it could be this? Not saying that it's not this. Exactly. But just make me think. Because, you know, because that's going to allow me in certain situations to be able to maybe approach them differently. Just, yeah. uh, like I'm using my relationship as an example just because when you're in a relationship, you're around someone and something can happen and your initial thought can be this. Yep. But my therapist is challenging me to be like, have you ever thought about the possibility mm. that? And it's like, mm, damn it. Like, it could be. Right. And how's a, how's a couple therapy for you? Because, I mean, y'all are engaged now, but how long have y'all been going to therapy as a couple? Um, we had a different couple's therapist at first. We've been with him for, I don't know, maybe four or five months. Four or five months. Wow. How long y'all been engaged? Um, Ten months. Ten months. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Man, listen. And has it helped the relationship? Yeah, it's, it's helped. It's helped with the relationship. I, I think the individual therapy is really is where because it is. like we're individually working on Ooh. one another and then being able to come in. And I don't mean that every session is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah I feel you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel you. But yeah. there is a level of uh, growth and communication that continues to come from that. You know, because we come from two different backgrounds. We come from. Um, we're, we're two different genders. We have two different experiences. Like even being black, we both have two different experiences when it comes because she's a black woman and I'm a black man. So those experiences are completely separate. The workplace, our experiences are separate. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of that kind of like is different. So it's a lot of unlearning that we have to to, to go through. You know, mm. I know as a man, there's a lot of unlearning I had to learn as a man. There's a lot of shit that uncles and older cousins that taught growing up that just without an adult, like that ain't that shit ain't right. Ooh. You know, so it's like it's a lot of stuff that from you know your childhood to being a teenager to being an early adult that you experience, and you know you, you don't you don't really know that those things impact you until you are sometimes in a relationship and you're. You, you kind of having a, a constant mirror to yourself, you know, so. You know, uh, it was so funny, man. I was just talking to a young lady and I was like, man, listen, I could say something and it, it could come off negative. And I was like, but it's not negative because that's just my experiences. But then I had to remind myself like, yo, wait, her experiences could be totally different. And, and when she hears that. It was negative. Correct. But then my experiences, it wasn't negative. So it's like you got to come together I mean, with two people, which is why I think couples therapy is good. I always told myself, like, when I get into the next relationship, before I even get engaged, uh, I'm going to get in couples therapy. 
Not because something's wrong. It's because I want it to be right. No, that's why we went. We didn't go. Like, we were going to go into couples therapy before. Uh, no, not before getting engaged because. We wanted to get in a couple of therapy before being married. Okay. Um, Because we didn't want to be, um, we wanted to be proactive and not reactive. We didn't want to go to couple of therapy because something is happening. We wanted to build something that would be strong, you know. Yeah. So, you know, we lollygagged, you know, went here. But then it's like we we locked in and we've been at it. And sometimes I don't want to be there. (laughs) I'm still mad about something before. I don't want to be there. But... It's helpful, uh, man. Like it's it's very it's it's very it's very helpful. Very helpful. Man. It's very helpful. Man, listen, man. I wish I had a two hour show. My team is pointing at the clock, man. We are coming up on that time to where we need to wrap it up. Uh, one quick question before we go out. What's what's non what's one goal you have for next year that has nothing to do with your vending machine business? Um I want to I wanna retire my mom. Mm. I want to retire my mom. Um, How old is she? My mom is 56. 56. And how much money do you need? When you say retire, you're talking about pay off home, or are you talking about I want to be able to send my mom X amount of dollars every month to live off of so she can live? Like, what does retire your mom mean to you? I want to be able to, um, because she owns her own home. Okay. Um, uh, I want to be able to, um, I don't know, maybe like $5,000 a month. (sighs) That's, That's the goal. Let's go, man. I, I have um, one goal is uh, not for 2023, um, but I do want to eventually pay off both both sets of my parents' homes. So I have two biological parents and two other parents. I'm like you. I The first man that I knew physically was my quote unquote stepfather, um, but he is my father. Yep. And my biological father was in my life from day one, though. So it was like, um, but but of course my mom married my stepfather and so as i could visually remember that and then my my other mother man is every bit of my mom and i'm like man I, i'm blessed to have four parents yeah. and i want to i want to position them to where they can enjoy my dad just retired my biological father just retired so both him and my mom are staying home you know they just chill and um, i want to be able to pay off their home so they can really enjoy all their money you know, and, and I work hard now because I'm like you and we'll, we'll end this show, guys. Um, it's so funny because they hear me say this all the time, which is why, man, I do. You, Marcus, keep that up, bro, because I said my mom and other father got married at the south of the border. They didn't have a wedding. They didn't have a honeymoon. And I said the south of the border. That's in between North Carolina and South Carolina. Mm. They went to the Mexicans and the Mexicans just did a little quick 30 minute situation and they're gone. Moved out of California where my dad was stationed at Camp Pendleton, moved into a one bedroom uh, studio suite, about 400 square feet. Our couch was our bed, our bed was our couch. And then never had a wedding, never had a honeymoon. Growing up, you know, unfortunately we, we lived paycheck to paycheck. You know, we we didn't do family things. We didn't do family trips at Disneyland. We didn't do, I didn't see my parents just leave for themselves and go out to over here just to get away for the weekend because we couldn't afford it. And I said, man, when I get married, uh, the first year, every month we're gonna go somewhere. Every quarter we're going out of the country. We're, every quarter we're gonna have a honeymoon. Every month we're just gonna get away, like go to Dallas, go to New York and just chill, have a getaway weekend. When we have kids, I'm taking them out of the country at least two times a month. Mm-hmm. Because I want I want to provide an experience. I want right. to provide a, a, a privilege for my family. And I think more black men need to be thinking like us. Because I'm like, you tell me, man, me and my fiance already get out of town every single month. And that just lets me know that's that's just setting up the black family differently. Yeah. And that's why I tell my team, like, yo, I want y'all to be making, you know, uh, multiple six figures with me so you can do these kind of things with your family. Because as black men and as a black family, I think it's our responsibility to position our kids to win and, and to really build a healthy relationship with our spouses. So I, 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 I salute you, my brother. And thank you. thank you for coming on to the show. And uh, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, I don't care what you are. At the end of the day, we all need to bust our butts um, so we can have this financial freedom and financial options. And the vending machine could be another avenue to help you pay off debt. 
this vending machine could be another avenue if you're out of debt to help you start building wealth and to help you start building a legacy to where you can have these kind of experiences uh, with your families. And I mean that, man. I can't wait to tell my wife, hey, babe, go ahead and schedule every weekend. Where are we going? You just let me know. I'll, we'll, we'll cut the check. There's no issues there. We got the money. All right, babe, it's quarter. Where are we going? Where are we going out of the country? We're going to Israel. We're going to London. All right, babe, this quarter we're taking the kids, uh, or this year we're taking the kids to Israel. And you know what? Let's take them to Greece. Let's, let's provide an experience um, for our families. And for black people, we need to stop settling to be um, complacent and just be okay with the okay, a good life. Nah, man. I want to have an excellent experience and an excellent life with my kids. So listen, we're going to drop all of Marcus' information in today's show notes. And I want to thank you all for watching the show. Make sure you all check out um, all of my uh, sponsored partners with us today. Check out BetterHelp. Get that therapy. Check out Bethel Tech. Get into a career field that would allow you the financial means to do what you want to do, to get out of debt, and make sure that you get life insurance. So that way, as you're building this, as you're building this true wealth, if something was to happen with you um, in your life, your family will be okay. Let's be wise with what we're doing. Let's be good stewards of the opportunity and the season that God has given us. Y'all, it's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. Thank you so much for checking this out and rocking with us. We'll see you on the next show. Peace out.